Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji and Nick Show Hello Hello Good morning Good day Good afternoon Good evening Good to be here Good night Good gravy Good rain Good sir night Good day Ah! <laughs> Goodness That's a rare That's a rare slip up That one Lockness That was a Do very rare Do you see I nearly messed it up, up On the second one I nearly missed it up totally. We've all been there We've all been there It doesn't happen often But when it happens It happens Well this Well actually Nick You should say it first Say your bit I always mess this up nowadays Go on go on go on go on go on uh, This this That was the Lockness game It's not a game It's not For pity's sake about Loch Ness. But this is the Benji and Nick Show, your number one podcast of vintage television in the known world and the unknown mm. world. I'm conquering what? both. That's right. We talk about vintage television. We pluck TV and all oddities out of the archives and we have a little look about them. We see if they stand up today and we give you our honest answer. Is it worth you watching? Because if it isn't, just go and do something else. Pop down Asda, buy a trifle it's always for two. worth. It's always worth watching, even if it's terrible. Which probably applies to today. <laughs> um, we're doing. Uh, we're talking about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the and, classic. And its what sequel, year of was course. it out? Yeah. I, what was when was it out? Rudolph the Ooh, Red-Nosed God. Reindeer, nineteen um, sixties. And its sequel, which was Rudolph's Happy Shiny New Year, waste of time. I think uh, it's sorry. the opposite. The sequel's better, but we'll, we'll get to that. Shiny. Um, nineteen seventy-six was Shiny New Year. Yeah, and, and it's it 1964 was Rudolph the yeah. Red-Nosed Reindeer. Okay, and this is where the whole generation thing comes into play. Anyway, uh, Shelley Dean, our uh, compatriot from over the ponds there, uh, will way. be... Uh, was it, was it, it that, that way? way? Hold on. It could be both ways. She will be along after the emails sent to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Also, just a very brief reminder that we are on Patreon. Go to patreon.com and see uh, if you fancy getting some of the fantastic extra stuff loads of extras thank, thank from you for those, those after you shows commentaries you name it they're on there you can watch us no, in don't video talk about, form don't talk about it too oh, much yes, we don't want to yeah, don't, don't, yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I feel you've got an email there let's let's slip into the emails yes well this one's uh, the title of this one is the Dalek films from our can, good chum um, oh uh, can I just say you've not made any comment about the jumper I'm wearing Oh, yes. Well, I, I suppose for those of us on the visual medium, Nick is wearing a fantastic international rescue jumper in full yeah, Christmas baby. glory. Look at that. He's, not only is he stylish, he's wonderfully warm. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, do carry on with the email. Sorry, I didn't it's mean to It's in Thunderbirds Blue as well, I sh- I'd like it's to nice. add. Thunder Blue. Go on. Uh, this is from our good friend Nicholas Farraza. Um, the subject of this one is the Dalek films. The Biderbeck tapes. No, it's not. The Dalek films. Yes. Um, Dear Nick and Benji. Yes. I've finally done it. I've gone and watched the Peter Cushing Dalek films. I've been a fan of Doctor Who since the early 2000s, when I caught a rerun of Logopolis on TV. And what an episode to start with. Block transfer computation. Uh, and have been hooked ever since. Look at that. There's that merry old Dalek. Mine's currently at the nativity scene downstairs. Um, somehow though I've never quite got around to watching the two Dalek films Uh, they've long acted as a gap in my otherwise near encyclopedic knowledge of the Doctor Who franchise however with your recent discussion of both films paired with the recent arrival of Britbox down here in Australia finally it seemed like the right time to finally take a dive I love them they were brilliant Yes, they were a bit rubbish, but in a very charming manner, just like all the best Doctor Who. I particularly loved Peter Cushing as the Doctor, Doctor Who. Uh, There was definitely some Hartnell in his portrayal for obvious reasons, but he still took the character in a different direction that felt fresh, but at the same time was still immediately, immediately, uh, (laughs) recognisable as the Doctor. I only wish that we could have seen more adventures with him. 
Perhaps a certain audio production company could look into the rights. Uh, oops, sorry, wrong podcast. Um, one thing that leapt out to me as a frequenter of the dark corners of Doctor Who Twitter, abandon all hope ye who enter, was the opening track of the Dalek Invasion of Earth 2150 AD. During the entire opening credits, I knew I'd heard that tune somewhere before, but I couldn't quite place it. Then I realised they'd only gone and stolen Pip Madeley's Movellan theme. I do <laughs> hope that the Daleks Still are sending Pip right. royalties for it. If not, perhaps we finally know what really started the Dalek Movellan War. Royalties! <laughs> it's a royalty war. Also, why do the Daleks have chairs in their base? Kind regards, Nick Farraza. They have chairs for the Robotmen, Nick. That's such a obviously. very intelligent point, isn't it, really? Yeah, obviously. And that's, of I course, sit, uh, Nick is referring to the first movie, which what are the chairs for? Where are the chairs in the first well, movie? I don't know, but I'm saying maybe there are them. There's a sort of ledge to sit down in the uh, prison area, isn't there, where they, the cell. There's a nice bit of artwork as well, isn't there, in the, in the, the corridor? Is there? I believe oh, so. Oh, you mean a that, sort of like a, a sculpture thing? Yeah. Yes. No, I don't mean like... I did that! I don't mean Do like a painting like hanging up, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that is the boy. fallen Madonna. Um, you know, it's just <laughs> the exterminated Thal. <laughs> the exterminated Thal. Just this I've like exterminated the Thal and painted a picture of it. It's very good. <laughs> I like the shading. Um, yeah, well, there we go, Nick. I'm so glad you enjoyed Although it. What they would have said, they would have said, "We painted a Thal, yeah. and then but get on with it." We have painted a Thal. And they sort of lose conviction halfway through. A Which will center. it be? <laughs> yeah. Get on its lunch. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Nip to the canteen. Sorry, you were saying I interrupted you. I can't remember. <laughs> I do like the echoes on the voice, as, as we've not discussed make before. Doors close. <laughs> it must last you till four o'clock. <laughs> That's just the most hilarious line, isn't it? You can just imagine that, can't you? Where is he? He's due for his dinner. Oh, yes, he's still recording the lines. Well, there we go. Thank you, Nick. So glad you enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, welcome to, to the club of people that have now seen the two greatest films ever devised by man or machine. <laughs> Indeed. Right, OK, here's one from uh, Simon Colnut. Um, uh, and it's called Quilla. Uh, hi chaps glad you got something from this I will say the theme is the best bit yes this is Quilla 1970s BBC sub James Bond I think uh, it was written specifically by composers Denton and Cook though it might have been stock music what do you think Benji being the expert on stock I music this, I think like all these things specific theme music stock music soundtrack I see okay Denton and Cook uh, also composed one iteration of the Tomorrow's World theme and the Hong Kong beat theme for a series I've never heard of. Oh, hold on. That's what we've got here. We've got a link to YouTube. I hope it's the Chinese detective. Oh, no, this is the Quilla theme. 1975. 1970. Denton and Cook, yeah. Let's see what other arts Denton and Cook do. Well, theme from that. Hong Kong beat uh, interesting also known as uh, Richard Denton and Martin Cook discover a uh, what sounds like a flange pedal <laughs> right uh, interesting it doesn't have the brass section opening that appears on TV so possibly it is stock music that got tinkered with when putting the titles together uh, Quilla Denton cooked theme from uh, TV well, hold on what's this link this is a very slick bit of the podcast I don't know what that's a link to uh, I have no idea. <laughs> um, what's this a link to? <laughs> Who am I? What's this? Oh, this is interesting. What's the Tomorrow's World? Oh, they did this one. 
Ooh. Whoa, we're doing some, we're throwing some great shapes here. <laughs> Do you remember this? So you don't remember this tomorrow I, as well. I thing, don't right? remember Here's this the thing, one. Is it? Here it goes. Here we go. Oh, come on. Sorry, the intro is too long on the record. I can't be bothered. It, go, it sort of goes... <laughs> yeah, that... There was a much more famous Tomorrow's World theme, wasn't there? There was, definitely, yeah. I it was kind of... Is that the proper like, one? Like, the the Tomorrow's World theme, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. This was one where they thought they'd make everything modern. <laughs> Richard and Denton, uh, uh, Martin Cook's Tomorrow's World theme, 1980. Yeah. Also, there seems to have been a mini boom in different versions of the Quilla theme by cover bands. Wow. There is probably a Jeff Love version out there. Jeff Love, who, you know, Jeff Love icon, and his orchestra. Yeah, yeah, icon of covering things in different ways. And- Here is a cover version with Legs and Co. style dancing. I like to think this is genuine, but suspect it's a fan edit. Okay. This might be a bit visual, though, for. Oh, goodness me. Right, well. For those watching the video, I'm quite bored already. Uh, I'm going to go to further into it. Oh, I love that bit of. That's a bit moogie, isn't it? It Certainly is. Oh, the old filter. Oh, oh, that's a terrible lead line sound, isn't it? It's slightly out of tune, as these old synths used to go. Slightly out of tune. Well done, folks. Well done. Well, thank you for that, Simon. Uh, I just put that in the used emails folder. You're getting an insight to the into the making of the Benji Nick show. Uh, this uh, here's one. I'll, I'll do this, shall I? I could send it to you. No, you do it. You've got it. Why not? Here it is on the computer. Uh, right, this one is called Dalek's Invasion of Earth, 2150 AD. Uh, it's from uh, Martin Watton. And he says, Hi, in her review, Shelley states that Nick Briggs' glasses are getting too old and he can't read the email. <laughs> no, states that she would like to follow up what happens to Bernard Cribbins' character, Tom, after he returns to the police station with the criminals. I would say this would be much more interesting... Uh, than you would first imagine. Despite watching this film at least umpteen and a bit times over the years, there was something there that I never noticed until my most recent viewing. As the end credits rolled, it occurred to me that there was another Tom, a Tom who is not coshed, who did not chase after the bank robbers and who did not stumble into the TARDIS. So if we were to go back to the police station when Tom returns from his beat to find a Tom being congratulated by his fellow officers for a successful collar, we would see something interesting and difficult for either Tom to explain. Sorry about all the pinging noises. Uh, It's probably best if in the canon of Doctor Who you file this away as some tale of an alternative reality as nothing like that could happen in canonical Doctor Who. Best wishes, Martin. I would also say, as I put that in the used email podcast emails there it goes um i would also say that that would largely not be interesting it would create a massive paradox wouldn't it but i mean it's not much of an interesting story is it i mean (laughs) it'd be it'd certainly be something to to you know you'd be in a bit of a pickle wouldn't you if you came back to find some other bloke in there well yeah but I'm talking about yeah I realise that but what we're talking about is a story about one policeman coming back to a police station and finding another version of himself there I mean where does the story go from there they both live in a flat together and and, and and always enjoy the same music and meals because they're essentially the same person well and they just eat dolly mixtures all day to the to the yeah perhaps that's it perhaps that's the answer that would be it Maybe, well, they, maybe maybe they get they have to fight to the death in order to who actually is the real Tom. The other I one. I think you're buying into this far more than I am. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking of all the possibilities. Maybe one Tom could eat the other Tom. Um, 
It's just going this dark direction. It's got horrible. It's got horrible. Uh, of course, uh, this is... Um, uh, many people will be listening to this, or some people will be listening to this round about Christmas time, won't they? Yeah, I suppose so, they will be, yeah. Be, so that's be. why we're dealing with a Christmassy uh, uh, programme, or two Christmassy programmes, very traditional Christmas programmes. I've invited... Is that me or you making that's that That's you, I, it's not me. For God's sake, it's my notification. You fool, you old fool. Don't even know your own computer, fool. Well, I can't really hear where it's coming from with these headphones on, you see. It's just coming from my ear. Blame it on Quilla. Right. Weird. Um, so we're just waiting for Shelley to arrive, really. Do you know what I've been watching recently, Nick? I've got the whole box set of these which were sent to me. Oh, my good got chum. That. They're really good. I forgot yeah, I how dark it all is. They're it is so very dark. dark. Yeah. Did you turn uh, the brightness up? Yeah, that helped. That's Batman, the original that. Batman or something. Yeah, the, these the, are the these 1990s the... Batman animations. Yes, correct. They're brilliant. Yeah. Uh, they're really... You know, watching them as a kid, I always kind of assumed that they were... Um, I thought they were, like, slightly dark, but not like this. Watching it back as an adult, and they're still just as good. They're, there's nothing patronising about these. It's full on. Here comes... Shelley. The sun. Doodle-doodle. Here comes the sun. <laughs> Hello. Bonjour. Hello. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Oh, don't get all sorts with me. Avon catalogue. Comment ça um, va? Ça va bien, merci. Et vous? Hello. 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 Welcome, Shelley. Welcome. How are you? Hi, guys. I'm good. How are you guys today? Very well, yeah. thank you. Very well. You're good, very Christmassy. And Chris, uh, Nick is in the Christmas sweater. The, uh, is that the uh, Jerry Fun. Anderson one? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I'm wearing a sparkling green yeah. top I look. for my the festivities. And Benji's in a black T-shirt. Yeah, I've, I've got terrible contrast on my screen. So you, you just look like you're in a black sparkly top. Oh, well. But it's still sparkles, sparkly. Sparkly. I count. Sparkly. That's what I like. The and the lights are. behind you. Lovely. Very good. Yeah, yeah. And everyone's come out to play. John Levine as a primord. Uh, what are those <laughs> characters next to John Levine behind you? This Brig? is my, this is my proof that. Oh yeah. <laughs> the Cybermen and the Robomen have a similarity. The original. They're Robomen. friends. That's like a. That's, that's I just a wanted to point to this out. This was. These were toys that were sold you know whenever and this was just a picture i found online of a robo man standing next to one of the original cybermen and yes indeed they do look similar they i'm do. just saying yeah yeah thank uh, you for noticing i've had that up there for weeks have you really <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just, just useless i've moved i've moved things i got a new screen to put behind me and i moved things around Is that but a yes new I, i'm like all the lights yes. that are going and moving and flicking yes. and flapping I thought I'd jazz it up a little bit. I got a streamer. bigger screen because before it was a three panel screen and it literally was like, yeah, I was like sitting in here like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, I, so I got a bigger one. Well, <laughs> well it's yes, far more professional so. than us. Just putting no, my well, Dalek away. It's, trust me, you don't want to see what's going on behind there. So that's, <laughs> it's, it's more now for everybody's edification. <laughs> so... so. What are we yes. talking about? We are talking about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Rudolph's shiny new year, which I was totally wrong about. <laughs> okay, off you go. Anyone? I thought well, at the end when we decided that we were going to watch this, I had said, oh, Heat Miser, I'm so excited. It's not that movie. It's a different movie. It's, <laughs> it's That one's... Um, uh, the, the the year without Santa Claus was the heat miser uh, character. I thought you meant the little of... the little um, caveman in the second one. That's what I thought you were referring no, to. No, no. There's there's a whole other movie that it's the year without Santa, and there's this character that's that's heat. There's there's heat miser and freeze something or another, and they sing these really fun songs. And uh, yeah, 
I was wrong. So this is like the first uh, Benji and Nick show where we've decided to watch something and then the first thing we've said is, oh, we watched the wrong thing. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I was mistaken about yeah. what movie we were about to watch oh, is I what bet. I'm saying. So um, well, Amounts to the same thing, though, doesn't it, really? Uh, oh, well, God, yeah. So who wants to start with uh, Rudolph I'm, and, I'm happy and, to start. and the shiny new well, year Well, can I well? just ask a question first? Yes. Mm-hmm. Sure. Is this something that was in your world? Well, was Rudolph, this... Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer was in my world. That is, I remember watching it in the 60s and 70s okay. as a kid. Okay, so and, it was, they did finding, air it over there. Yeah, yeah, and finding it really, okay. really special. And I loved right, it. Okay. And I was really scared of the big monster at the end. I've started talking about it now. The other yeah. one, I didn't know about the sequel because that right. came in the 70s. And, you know, I wasn't a child then. So right. I was, right. well, I was, but I was growing up. I was Okay, but it teens. is, it's, it, Rudolph, that, that whole area, you know, genre of films from back then, that was something that was aired over there. Okay, oh, I wasn't sure. And even, in my, even in my time, seen. yeah, uh, they were on Cartoon Network because I, I had Sky from a very, very young age, pretty much from when Sky came out. And so mm. we got to see a lot of these older, you know, these older things again, reruns. Right. But then I suppose okay. half of Sky programming is essentially American programming anyway. So, Well, of course, okay, you know, I uh, yeah, the, I don't know that. the Rudolph <laughs> the Red-Nosed Reindeer thing would have been on uh, ITV for us. I seem to okay. remember there being commercials. And okay. I, yeah, yeah. So, All right. so Benji, do give us your opinion. I mean, okay, opinion. so I, this obviously this comes from, like, like I guess, memory. I pers- Rudolph the Red Nose, okay, firstly, they're both, they're both <laughs> good in their own way. Like, they look brilliant. Like, I think that the model work is sublime and it's so wonderful and endearing and cute and lovely. And they're, I think Nick summed it up in saying that they are something very special. Um, I think the second one, Shiny New Year, is a vastly better piece and much more fun and has got some really good ideas in it compared to the first one, which not only is slightly... is Not only is it re- like quite cr- like crummy and patronising and, and it's very stereotypical, but it's also... There's not a lot to really like in it because everybody's pretty horrible. You know, it's like that thing Nick sent over the trailer... Which like the yeah. honest oh, trailers, yeah. I think it's called. <laughs> the honest like, trailers website did yes. a trailer of but it. But it's yeah. like exactly that. It's like like Santa Claus is a horrible old man. Um, you've got all of the elves are horrible elves, apart from that one weird elf that wants to be a dentist. Inexplicably so. We have, he wants to be a dentist, and therefore well, he's an elf. Which outcast. on honest trailers, they say it's clearly code for being gay. <laughs> yeah, I actually the- just read an op-ed uh, that was in the New York Times last December that is... St- Exactly that. That if you take everything about this that movie, the Rudolph, the Red Nose Reindeer movie, it's just completely equals um, the LGBTQI plus community. <laughs> yes. But it's just. But the thing is, though, is this the 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 message that they're trying to give out of this with this particular thing, and, and I'm talking about this in a literal sense in the in the actual thing is. You know, being a, an outcast isn't a bad thing. You know, Rudolph has a red nose and this other guy wants to be a dentist. Um, but I think, <laughs> as, as they say in the Honest um, uh, Trailers thing, that really the message of this is, and of course I didn't know this watching it as a kid because I just thought it was charming and scary. The thing I remember about it is it being scary with that monster. The you monster's know? great. Yeah. And the music is so overblown and, and dramatic, isn't it, with the monster? It's like the kind of music you get in Lost in Space when the monster of the week arrived. But the message actually, looking at it with modern eyes, is that it's bad to be different unless you're useful to the mainstream yes. and that That's, that is you know that yep. uh, unless you're useful to heteronormative society then, then you, you are bad and wrong you know yeah you know, and Terrible. this whole this whole thing would have been if you were to take father christmas santa claus as as he's meant to be the first thing he would say is oh well, he's got a red nose but we must all learn to love each other yeah. because apparently this is this yeah. this is coming from the same bloke who says you've got to be nice to other people otherwise you don't get any presents but he's straight straightforward yeah straightforward but it doesn't apply to me it i doesn't can apply be really to me. nasty to people God, the poor yeah. bloke he chucked away all those useless toys that the stupid elves made and then can you imagine how irritated he must have been when they said oh we found all these toys they want to come back he's thinking oh bugger i've got to get rid of them now what can i do we'll palm them off to somebody you know there's just yeah. it's just a terribly a terribly shoehorned message in a piece of patronizing rubbish masqueraded with wonderful 
with wonderful, lovely toys, you know, models. However, yeah. this is why I want to go. However, the second film I think is really nice, and I think is lovely because it's got. I love What's the message of the second film? Because I tell you now, I couldn't watch it. I found it. The first one I could watch out of nostalgia because I remembered it. And even though it is actually retrospectively quite offensive, they didn't mean it that way. But that's it just reflects the values of its society, the society of that day. The second one, I found I didn't like the models. I thought their faces weren't as good. I just I could see it was done slightly better because it several years had passed and technology for stop motion animation had improved. But I just found it so cloyingly. It was like being hit by a huge bucket of caramelized sugar. It was just, and it sort of <laughs> stuck to me and burnt my skin. You know, I've been in hospital all week because of it. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I there it was is... horrible. And the first one's pretty horrible. I'm going to give them both really low marks because I found I've, it made me hate Christmas and everything about Christmas. They were you see, so I... cloying. <laughs> I and like I the second one because it's full of one. fun ideas. I, I like it because what it's... What are the fun ideas? Sorry. You've got you've got things like the oh. archipelago of different Ooh. times where the years stand still and each island is a year and each place... You know, you've got different Fair stuff enough, like that. I didn't get to that bit. I was you didn't too get, bored. Yeah, exactly. You didn't get to that bit. So you have all the different times. You've got the cavemen, you know, prehistoric times. You've got the 17th century. You've I mean, I may be wearing times. the jumper, but clearly I'm not a fan of Christmas. Well, well, well quite. <laughs> you've got, you know... Well, what's interesting about the the islands of time is that they are what what happens is is you're you're the baby new year of that particular year that's where he retires to and that's what starts each island yeah. and it's and some of them he, they visit and some of them do, they don't but it's really if you've I, I paid attention only because I, w I read the wiki <laughs> but it's the way they describe um, they say that 1492 island uh, Rudolph mentions that the people on the island were too busy discovering things to talk to them yeah um, <laughs> We and then it. the uh, 1893 island, Rudolph mentions that the inhabitants have never ha heard of happy, meaning the baby that they're looking for. Um, 1893 was indeed an unhappy time as major economic depression called the Panic of 1893 hit the United States that year. So it's just these silly little mentions of bad years. And it just made me think like how funny 2020 <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 2020. Of 2020. What, what rubbish is little going island that's to going to be. <laughs> do they uh, do they do 1929, the Great Depression at all? Not not specifically mentioned, no. But it's just 1933, Hitler elected Chancellor of yeah. Germany. Yeah, they, know, they so. didn't they didn't bring up the Holocaust. I, I, I can't like imagine knights, why. You get knights of the Round Table, and like you've got this wonderful knight whose visor is shut, and you can just see his beard hanging out of it. But I like things like they have to cross the sands of time, and yeah. like 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 a, a desert, and you've got this wonderful camel that's got a clock as its sort of body, and I just like. I like things like that, and I sounds like, quite fun. Yeah, I'm it's perhaps fun. Like I should watch that. Oh, God, can it's, I be bothered? It's just nice. It's just I like like Father Time is fun, and I, I like his building with all the things outside, like Times Square. It's and the just, music's more fun too. It's, it's just not a better, like I, fa I found that the that everything about the Rudolph movie was very depressing. Absolutely, and, and just like oh, and but yet the second one, and maybe because shiny is in the title it just mm. automatically is is happier but the uh, music was just yeah. better and catchier and more fun and and just to interject i th have watched these movies every year of my childhood wow. like that was that was a thing you did it yeah, came yeah. on on cbs at christmas time and you watched rudolph and then subsequently when well i certainly um, did that with rudolph but not right and yeah. so then when the other ones came out so i thought oh i'll remember this i'll remember everything about this i'm watching it going huh wait what <laughs> who when did that there was so much that i i was like i couldn't i didn't remember the the anything about uh the lumberjack guy the, the yeah, minor why does guy. he keep licking his tool? he's licking don't remember licking his tool. I love that you just said <laughs> that. Um, but I don't remember that. I, there were so many things. And then I realized, after I started watching the, the, the Shiny New Year, it's because, as a kid even, I recognized how messed up and depressing and horrible Rudolph was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You watch his own father I know. say... 
No, you have to be uncomfortable because you need to fit in. Yeah. So having self-respect is more important than fitting than than being who you are. And I was like, I didn't realize I knew I noticed that as a child, but now as an adult, I do now know. Wow, yeah, I realized it then. That, and they that don't how really messed up make, that was. Yeah, they don't really make amends, do they? He just Rudolph just no. becomes useful. Exactly. Yeah, exactly like what in, you in said. In extraordinary yeah. circumstances. And there's yeah, no, re- there's uh, poor old dentist, you know, w- apart from oh, helping Hermie. the monster out a bit. What earth's he going to do? He's not, you know, they're, they're not saying to him, oh, go and we'll pay for your university tuition. Go off. Yeah. And he gets he, the, the dentist, he's like, he's meant to be an elf, but he's like a different species to the other elf, isn't he? I mean, they're <laughs> yeah, all bald totally, with pointy completely. ears and he's got blonde hair with normal ears. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's got the uh, swoopy Donald Trump thing, the, yeah. the cartoonish Donald Trump. It's, it's like a, an Hermie. ice cream cone ice cream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dolloped on his head. But even little things like, like these subservient elves go and sing the musical number for this film. Like the Hitler youth, aren't they? Like the Hitler youth, exactly. <laughs> and then, and then You've got you've got Adolf Hitler, Father Christmas there, so telling him that it's not even very good. Can you imagine yeah. that? We've been yeah. working oh, yeah, for months on this, and he says, "Oh, well, it could be it, better." You think it's what? a good review of the song though, because it isn't a good yeah, song. It's and he says, it's a good song, song, but it's not the point. He gets up it? and walks out, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, totally. And then and then and then Mrs. Claus is left going, "No, no, no, he didn't mean that." <laughs> Why is it's she having to justify her? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's rubbish. It's just it's horrible. Like and and just so sad. And and what you said is so true that that. It's only okay to be different if you're useful. Yeah. It's a terrible message. difference it's a makes terrible it message. useful. And it's Are you useful in society? <laughs> <laughs> but even in the second film with the whole, with Happy's ears and everybody yeah. laughing at his ears and he runs away, it's not really resolved. There's not really a case of, uh, uh, what they're trying to say again with that one is, you know, you, you don't be ashamed of who you are. You know, right. because and R- they Rudolph has turn, a red nose. and Yeah, um, they didn't turn his ears into something useful. Like you, you... <laughs> Do you know what ears I mean? Are to, useful. To, <laughs> your no, it ears are useful. Your ears didn't provide a useful service. Fridge. You know, didn't, you know. It didn't provide a useful service. Right. So I just, yeah, I. But that's it, that was my big takeaway from this was that I thought I knew it, but then I didn't. Yeah. And well, I definitely echo that with the first one because, yeah, yeah, that's I what I'm talking about. I don't about, know. Yeah. I don't know that at all. The voices were so harsh, and the, everything was harsh about the sound, wasn't it? The music's harsh and brash, and the voices are all, you know, it's everything's yeah. kind of out, get out of my face. Um, yeah. And Burl Ives, who was like a major movie star, wasn't he? It's interesting yeah. the way they'd made the snowman look a bit like Burl Ives as well. Was of course. The person who's the storyteller in the second film gets a Red big Skelton. credit. I don't know who that is. Oh, he's super duper famous here. And and he that his puppet also looks like him. Yeah, he does look. I've just, I've just yeah. got a picture of Red, like Red, Red Skelton. Skelton. He looks just like Red him. Red Skelton yeah. is a famous comedian. He's He was uh, very famous for his physical comedy and his, his use of movement in... I suppose I better was, Google yeah. Red Skelton so I can see his face. Skelton, it's not yes. Roy Skelton, is it? That's Hello. Red. <laughs> the famous Dalek voice artist. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, the best character, the best two characters in all of this are Sam the Snowman and Old Father Time. They're my two favourite characters, yeah. and the narrator's just the best characters because there's because they're on the level of it. They're they're not part of this wacky, stupid world. There's some they're somewhat uh, reduced. Red Skelton mm-hmm. looks like a sort of cut price Bob Hope to me. He does look like a cut price Bob Hope. You're bang on. Yeah. Well, bang on. They were around the same time, so. Yeah. He's got that kind of comedy look. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to fall very over and be really yeah. funny. <laughs> <laughs> but he was. He's, he's very adored here. <laughs> I understand. But, yes. Yeah. I feel that I've offended a, a, a continent. No, you have not. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it just. The second one, I found myself singing along with the songs, which meant I remembered them. Some decent them. songs. Some decent songs. First one, one, didn't remember any of the songs, and they all sounded the same to me, and they were all miserable, and, you know, I just, I, it, it, it's so interesting re-watching something that was such a massive part of your childhood mm. and realizing how age gives you perspective. And the connection's and gone. Yeah, yeah, and I just it 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 
I didn't like it. I was not enjoying myself while I was watching it, and I was not having any of that warm, fuzzy, nostalgic thought that I thought I was going to yeah. experience. I just totally, it was not, not even that for me. It but was you're more with Benji and that the second one is... Oh, I, I love the second one. Better. It was just, it was, I love the voice, the voiceovers. I mean, having some, been worked in that industry for so many years and a lot of cartoon actors that I know, just the, the voice acting in the second one was so enjoyable for me. Um, but, and it was just, it was a lighter, more fun story, even though, yes, they were all still making fun. Of, but the only puppet you know, that humans looked dreadful are horrible. was Rudolph because it was the same puppet from years gone right. by. So it looked tired. It looked like it had been in somebody's drawer, hadn't it? Was you it know? the same puppet? It looked very similar. I, in my d- eyes. I thought it looked it, quite. I'm different. sure it was the same puppet. Really? I thought I'm the face sure. was different. I like. But I listen, I only watched these. it for about five minutes before I just went, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> You only have the right to right to pull out of watching things in extreme circumstances, Nick. And you missed out well, on a. I'm afraid there was here. an earthquake. You missed out and, on uh, 1965 <laughs> Island, where Rudolph states it was too noisy, which apparently yeah, was fun. a reference to Beatlemania. Um, and you missed out on 4000 BC Island, oh, yes. where Rudolph mentions that all its inhabitants wanted to do was build pyramids. <laughs> so, you know, it's fun. It's fun. Well, and you missed out on 70, 1776 Island, where Americans are <laughs> celebrating kicking your butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's Independence Day every it's day. Independence, no. July 4th every day. It was but, much yeah, more it, complicated than that. But anyway, <laughs> but yes, okay. There were various other parties involved, but it basically did. I mean, we had a dreadful king at the time. Anyway, he was an idiot. Well, he literally yes. was. He was insane. I think. Yes, the yes. George, George the whatever he was. So no king wonder George, the Americans the got cross about the way things yeah. are being done. <laughs> well, listen, I'm going to give Rudolph the Red Nose Reindeer a a two. Wow. And I'll give it that too because uh, I really like the animation and the music in it. I, I yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's actually like it did its own thing and it stands out as something important. And I'll give Rudolph Shiny New Year a three because it's just, I like it. And I can't not like it really. I loved it as a kid watching it. I remember so my two sister. exclamation marks. My sister, it. she said, I, I told her what we were doing and she said, oh, I remember watching watching both of those. She said the second one, she said, was the better one. And you know, it's funny. She thought the same. So maybe it's maybe it's my mine and her nostalgic link to it. Mm, but right. yeah, I think the first one was pants, and the second one was much better. That's my. Yeah. There we go. Well, I'm gonna give Rudolph the first one. Rudolph the Red Nosed Ranger. I'm gonna give that. I'm gonna have to say a one, just because it ruined <laughs> what I thought <laughs> I enjoyed. Like I <laughs> thinking about it, I'd think, "Oh God, yeah, I love that." But then watching it, I went, "No, uh-uh. no, I didn't." It's Mm-mm. a horrible. No. it's a horrible so, piece. And you gave so it two get, exclamation marks. I should, in retrospect, they give it one. I was trying uh, to, you know, you it, were it trying to be nice. <laughs> I was trying to be nice, but it, yeah, I mean, it just wasn't very good. I just, I yeah. really only give it marks because I like how it looks and sounds yeah. in terms of its well, music and its visuals. I don't like it. the rest of it. Is it's a dreadful. Really, what Shelley said, it's just there's nothing nice about it. No, mm. no, and then but and so my marks for uh shiny new year, I'm gonna give it a four just because yeah, baby. it balanced wow. it, it, it was better than I remembered, and I found myself really just bopping along with the songs and singing. Like afterwards, I was like walking around my house singing one of the new year songs. Yeah. Just, oh, how uh, lovely! Yeah. yeah <laughs> Yeah. All right, Nick. <laughs> I will, no, I'll give the first one one exclamation mark okay. because of the animation and the nostalgia value. But yeah, it is horrible. It's harsh, and like for you, Shelley, it destroyed my good feelings for it. I would have, right. right, as you probably heard last time, I would have right up until the moment of watching it say, "This is a very special thing to my memory, and it's just <laughs> horrible." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the second one I gave up on because I'd had enough of the horribleness of the first one. And the second one, I just didn't like the look or feel of it. But I gave up. I didn't give it a fair chance. Yeah. And I had a rule when I was a, a, a film reviewer as a, a job. Uh, if ever, and it only happened, I think, once 
maybe twice but i think just once i made a rule for myself that if i found a film so boring that i had to leave i thought well that's my problem not the films and so i would my automatic rule was to give it three stars as it were so i'll give it three exclamation marks as a fair crack of the whip given that i personally wimped out on it but i will try and go back and have a look at it i yeah. i like the, the all the time stuff sounds fun i just yeah. all the cutesy stuff at the beginning with santa i just oh no and i, oh, I no, just that, didn't, that I didn't like, like the faces i did i prefer the cartoon, faces because in the in the i in, prefer yeah, the faces of the other one actually i preferred the puppets i liked the kind of primitiveness it seemed like a stylistic choice whereas this was like trying to be more realistic and failing yeah, yeah this one has a different style for the human like yeah. characters but that's it once it, basically what they what they did is they just summarized the general thing with that opening bit like yeah father christmas that's that this is that and the other i'm father time let's get on with this film and then it has a little just bit to with tie the, it together Exactly, to make it yeah. look because we're using it's the same It's a bit like puppet. the Sylvester McCoy bit at the beginning of the uh, Pull Me yeah, Down exactly. TV movie. Yes. <laughs> it's just the yes. same franchise, Just by so the way. you know that you're watching Doctor Who, here's <laughs> the seventh Doctor. Because you'll but never recognise it from the theme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, th I think I would say that Shiny New Year gets better. The second that Sergeant Ticker va vanishes, it gets good because he was, he was rubbish. And then once he goes... <laughs> Sergeant Ticker? Is that his name, Sergeant Tigger? And once he goes and they meet the camel, you're like, yeah, great. Yeah. Let's let's rock on the was it quarter past nine? Is that his quarter name? Quarter past five. Quarter Can past I call you five. Court for short? No, I would prefer it if you didn't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Court for short. <laughs> I love it. So, uh, Big Ben the whale, Nanny nine yeah. o'clock, love yeah. it. one million BC, the caveman. Yeah. Oh. O M. O M. His name yeah. was O M. O M. And he was a happy caveman. Wow, mm. and I love the I love that the dinosaurs and the cavemen were living together Just in happy. harmony. <laughs> Just yeah, oh, I love it. No, it's good. People talking I dig about it. Well, there we go. To Just out of interest, before we, continue, <laughs> before we continue, I just want to see how many members of the production team from are the still alive. No, how many carried through to this second film? Oh. There's quite a gap between them. Mm. Um, and I'd just like to see, like, the writer of the original was Romeo Muller. Uh, the second one, the writer was... So it's the same bloke. Is it the same directors? Oh. Different director. Oh, Different Rankin direct and Bass are the, the production team. So, yes, it's the same for both. Rankin and Bass directed the second one, but the director of the first one was Larry Romare. So very different. I'm Nick's just decided that. to give up the ghost. Completely. No, sorry, I was just yeah. seeing whether I, I, I'm looking at the time and J Jamie Anderson is. Um, I know you said Jerry Anderson. Uh, <laughs> Jamie Anderson, I think this is precisely the wrong time for him. So I think he's going to be a no show again. Okay. Uh, oh. said, I was, yeah, I, that's. I was. I wanted to ask him if if about his if his dad had any thoughts and feelings and stuff on. Oh, no, no, he's about to go on an important business call. I, he did oh. tell me three o'clock, and it's about and it's fourteen fifty nine according to my clock here, where we're, rec when we're recording this. I presume this is uh, precisely the wrong time for Benji Nickerson. He said absolutely about to start a Canada <laughs> call, so that's that's the end of Jamie. So uh, we we can proceed to uh, deciding what we're going to do next week. Well, how about we go down a little bit of a different route? Why don't we go for a sort of mystery? Oh, tale. that's a good genre. <laughs> yeah, well, I wonder who thought of that. Shelley's um, got an imaginary uh, magnifying glass. That's very good. Very good. Thank mind, you though. for picking up my uh, my oh, physical that's... comedy on a podcast. <laughs> very good. You're just like Red Skelton. You are. I am. <laughs> so why don't we go and watch Poirot? Poirot okay. with the fantastic theme tune on the Korg M1 synthesizer. <laughs> and Dave, what is it? David Suchet. Suchet, who's from, that? From, uh, uh, what was the Doctor name of Doctor Who. Show? No, the show we watched. Oh, yes, uh, Blot, Blot on the Landscape. Yeah, he's from Blot, Blot, Blot yeah. on the Landscape. Blot, yeah. Yes. He was also in an episode of Doctor Who. Oh, okay. He was, but I was, I was in... I've seen his butt, so... 
Oh, no, that no, wasn't that his wasn't butt him. that I saw. No, 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 no somebody else. No, 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 Sorry. Let me saw George Cole's butt. <laughs> I saw George Cole's butt. The, uh, David Suchet was actually in an episode of The Professionals as well. Where he played, where he played a drug lord, but he looked rather funny because he was walking around with a bandana over his head. So, yes, we'll watch the first episode of Poirot, I think, because it's a very stylish... Very so season one, series. episode one. Yeah, they did. Yeah. They end up doing all of Agatha Christie's Poirot stories, didn't they? And David Suchet got really serious about it when he, when he was on set. He he was Poirot the whole time. He did the accent. Oh, well, very method. Yeah, very method. method. And you know, it's very traumatic when the, in the final episode he does die, which is like a million seasons later. And there was a documentary all about it, and it's very weird. His total belief in the part but also very touching because he actually had to do his death scene didn't he just died in bed it was really anyway there's none of that in Ooh. this also the guy is, who's the this guy is the who's... abc murders which is a real classic isn't who, it who is the guy who's the sidekick to poirot is it captain hastings oh it's our old hastings yes and hastings. who's he played by it's Hugh Fraser. Hugh Fraser, it? who's we've worked with a lot at Big Finish. He's fantastic. He's the most yes. delightful, oh, okay. lovely, gentle, brilliant actor. Very witty, and so it'd be great to see him as a much younger man too. Excellent. Absolutely. Oh, good. Well, great go, suggestion. So. I'm yes. excited Horror. to see that. I've never I seen how we any came of them. To that conclusion. <laughs> right. Let's get close to the microphone now. Yes, let's. Oh, well, that's thank close. you so much for watching the Benji and Nick show with our lovely uh, guest. Well, it's not really a guest, she's a co host. It's Shelley Dean as well. So let's rock and roll um, and say goodbye. I'm, I'm, and you're listening to it and mostly not watching it. Uh, uh, why am I not lovely? Uh, it's goodbye. From you're me. just part of the furniture, Nick. You know, you're just <laughs> part it's of the Benji and Nick show. You know, part it's of the your furniture. Christmas jumper. <laughs> I'm just a Christmas jumper with a brain <laughs> goodbye bye and, and goodbye pressing stop now ka -chunk.